This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Marula Mining are in advanced negotiations with a Chinese battery manufacturer and its lithium offtake partner to establish a joint venture for a lithium sulfate plant at the Blesberg Lithium and Tantal Mine in South Africa. The plant is expected to be commissioned in the second half of 2025, will utilise spodumene ore from the open pit mining operations at Blesberg. Additionally, Marula Mining has raised £750,000 to a subscription placement agreement issuing 15 million new ordinary shares at a price of five pence each. Well, thank you very much for your joining us today. Jason Brewer, the CEO of Marula Mining. How are you? Mark, I'm very good. It's a pleasure to talk again. Indeed it is. So we're seeing these uh, QGC, these AUO funds starting to come in now, which is great for Marula. On this interview, I was sent quite a lot of questions from shareholders in the Telegram group. So I wonder if we can just basically go through them and uh, get those questions answered. So this won't be my interview. This will be an interview uh, that the shareholders have put together. So quick fire questions if we can, because there are uh, quite a few. We'll see what we can get through. But first of all, could you expand on the logic of a JV and why share funding of the plant uh, and the profits? Yeah, look, with, um, with Blesberg, I think last year, first half of this year was probably one of the worst performing uh, commodities, lithium. And there was such volatility in it. In South Africa, there was issues with logistics at the port and on the rail. So with consultation with our offtake partner, with the Chinese group that was actually purchasing the spodumene ore, um, they all basically, both of them approached us and said, look, rather than do this, can we actually produce an uh, intermediate product there at the mine site, which we would then purchase? Um, that high value product, there's less volatility in the pricing. So you've got much more stable revenue income. Uh, logistics challenges, instead of transporting a, a hundred containers a month, you're doing a fraction of that because obviously this is a higher value, lower volume uh, material. Um, and they were willing to put in their technology and put in their funding to get it built. So mm. it was a pretty easy decision for us to make. Okay, okay. Next question I have is 2,000 tonnes high value sulphate. This is approximately 100,000 US dollars per tonne. So at those rates, 200, US do 200 million US dollars per, per, annum, per annum revenue. Yeah, I think that's what the prevailing price is at the moment. So that's what you're going to be getting under that joint venture out of that plant, okay. um, indicatively. So... Yeah, that has a major impact on the economics. And that was one of the key deciding factors as well, of course, economics. It's got to make money and it's got to be profitable and give us the ability to fund other broader things up there at Blesberg. Okay, okay. An input into the plant is the fines that three to five millimeter, 3.5%. So is this in effect input from the byproduct of making the 6% spodumene? No, basically what we're going to be doing, uh, it now gives us the opportunity to, to use that spodumene ore feed. And instead of setting, remember we're using the Blesberg, um, Rados and Tomra XRF units. What you can do, you can use effectively the calibration there, the, the AI um, algorithms okay. to basically um, produce or basically get out that 3.5% um, grade material at high, but producing a high volume. So, you know, you can maximize grade, but you lower tons. Here, you, you're basically setting it at a 3.5% grade. And with that, you're going to get a high volume of material going through. So that's where you're getting that from. You're not just getting that from the stockpiles. Um, we're actually going to get that from the open pit mining, where we're anticipating appointing the mining contractor over the course of this month. Okay. And in terms of the technology, Jason, is the technology tried and <coughs> tested? Are there any risks in building a new plant? Look, Mark, as, as you've seen, there's many of our peer groups that have been building um, plants in, in Southern Africa, and they've had various mishaps, which have caused major issues in terms of working capital and, and, and product. Here, we're using their technology, which has been tried and tested. Okay. They've taken our material already. They've, they've received material. We've, we've sent them. Uh, we've sold them the spodumene ore. It's perfectly tested for this processing route. So 
yeah, from a, a processing risk, from a construction risk, from a, a commissioning risk, uh, it's very, very much reduced. Okay. The next question was on in what way has Blesberg material been used with the testing? So you have effectively sent your material and your material has gone through that testing process. Absolutely. And that's why they came back and were basically very positive about saying, guys, we don't, we don't want all this material. Because remember, we're sending them through a very low grade, relatively low grade con, mm. a 6% spot or okay, which means there's 94% of it. It's, there's a lot of waste material there. Okay. They've got to deal with that in China. Okay. When you, when you send that con, whereas now we're obviously, we're selling them a much higher value product. So they're not having to deal with the waste product of taking a big bulk commodity such as spodumene oil. Okay, okay. And can you expand it all on the timeline for starting and completing the new plant and getting it into production? Look, we're hoping to finalise the key commercial terms of this joint venture um, over the course of this month. And based upon the, the agreement we have there um, and the formal joint venture documentation, will then move very quickly into the implementation phase. Uh, the design work has already been done. Uh, costing has already been done. Key consumables. Uh, this was part of the discussions we had about two months ago. The key consumables, the sulfuric acid and, and so on. How is that sourced? How is that delivered? What is the cost? Okay. You know, we've gone through all of that. So as soon as we've got that formal joint venture uh, agreement signed, sealed, announced, of course, then we'll be moving into that implementation phase. Okay. And is there any way you can sort of uh, discuss how the relationship might work and who is funding the plant? The funding of the plant will be through the Chinese party. That's how they're effectively earning into the joint venture. So that's their, their benefit. Effectively, they're securing a long-term feed into their, into their battery plants back in, in China. So it's a very strategic move by them. Okay. So from our point of view, Again, as a, as a junior, as an emerging producer, developing company, um, not to have to be too concerned about the funding of that mm. and the commissioning of it as well. Yeah, I think commissioning risk is one of the biggest issues that faces uh, junior mining companies in Africa. So to have that mitigated this way, you know, the partners are very much aligned. I don't think you can get better alignment here. They're putting in their plant. Um, they're putting in their technology to basically produce a value-added product at Blesberg to feed into them their, their, okay. their battery manufacturing plant. So it's, it's a great alignment. And they're funding that plant. So, I mean, effectively, is it almost like a prepayment for advanced delivery of the product? It's basically, it's them, it's their earning, if you want to put it that way. It's, it's their earning to the joint venture to secure the rights to that product, okay. that high-value product and a dedicated stream of material. So they're not, you saw last, year before last, was it, where spodumene and lithium prices were skyrocketed. You know, it's amazing how lithium was once the, the darling of the market in terms of the best performing commodity. And then it's one of the worst performing commodities. They don't want to have to deal with that volatility. You know, when prices were high, they, you know, lithium battery manufacturers were going out into the market and paying through the nose to secure product. Here, they will have a much more secure supply, which they know they've got the rights to going forward for okay. whatever many years we enter into that arrangement. Okay. Before. That makes sense. Okay. And in terms of life of mine of the plant and how long to get to an ROI, what can you say on that, if anything? Uh, look, we are looking at that Blesberg operation. I think as part of the mining right application work, which went through, we had an initial 10-year mining life there. Okay. And that was based upon the limited phase one phase two kind of interpretations of the drilling there. So, you know, putting in this plant, putting in uh, that sort of capital, and it, it goes well beyond the 10 years, but it's, that's our, whenever we look at a mining operation, it's a minimum 10 year mine life. We've picked up Northern Cape Lithium and, and Tansom, just next, Lithium and Tungsten, just next door to Blesberg. So we've increased our footprint around Blesberg multiple times. Mm -hmm. So, we're using Blesberg as that central processing hub, not just to produce the value lithium products, but all the other byproducts that come out of that mineral suite there at Blesberg, at NCLT, Corridor, et cetera. Okay. And as part of the joint venture, would you be looking to do the traditional scoping study, PEA, et cetera, DFS? Um, we're moving straight into the construction there. They've already tested the material. Right. Um, had people at site. They've been speaking to our consultants. They've... 
We will be putting out firm numbers. Uh, we will be finalizing the CPR work on Blesberg. There's been some additional samples requested by, by Jacques Perr, who does all our CPR work. Um, and those are on some of the much more high value minerals that have been identified at Blesberg and around. So yeah, you will have all the constituent reports that you would expect to go into a definitive feasibility study, a bankable feasibility study. Right. But unlike those companies that produce those reports, we don't have to go to the bank markets or the equity markets to fund this development. It's already secured okay. as part of this joint venture development. Yeah. Okay. So you're going down, you are doing the studies to, to prove definitively what is there, but it's really Absolutely. all about getting into production effectively as quick as you can as well. It is, but you've got to bear in mind, I mean, the Chinese have had this product. They've tested this product. They know that it's suitable for this processing plant. Okay. Um, we've done all the costings over the past couple of months, like I say, on all the key consumables the reagents there, the sulfuric acid, which is a key component. Um, all of that work has been done. It's now once that joint venture is formally signed, we will be then be putting out a subsequent announcement, setting out the economics so all can see. Perfect. Okay, good stuff. Uh, there's another question here. How much LISO4 the Chinese produced from the 27.5 tonnes of SC6 sent last year at 5.5%? Am I correct in thinking that equates to 1.5 tonnes of lithium concentrate? Jesus, you've got some very smart investors out there, haven't you? Um, Maybe you can come back is, on that if you want to. I know that's a yeah, I'll, I'll, that's something which Henk and Martin have been dealing with over there with these guys. Henk, who's obviously our general manager of operations at um, at Blesberg, is dealing with the Chinese. He's dealing with Fujianx on a day to day basis. Okay. So. He will be able to give us the, the formal numbers on that. We'll get back on that one then. So just moving on to general Blesberg questions. Tomra update. When will it be commissioned? Uh, I think the civil works will be completed over the course of next week, the week after that. Okay. So we're expecting in November that it will be commissioned. Okay. And in parallel to building the plant, Marula proposed to still produce and ship spodumene and other byproducts. Can Jason expand on this and indicate when we are likely to start seeing shipping? You will. Part of this joint venture structure, we are in discussions as to whether we will be stockpiling the spodumene ore to feed into this plant or we will be continuing to do sales there. That is something which we're talking now with all the selected parties. Okay. Uh, we are waiting on the Feldspar production. We are waiting for the final pricing to come through there on the offtake agreement. Okay. Uh, we will then be looking at um, getting that product out. I think from speaking with Martin this morning, basically from start to finish, um, it's a three to four week period from signing the offtake arrangements there okay. and delivering products. Okay. So more offtake Which we see this quarter. Okay. Okay. Right this quarter. So more offtake agreements to come. Okay. That covers that next quarter. Yeah, the four, we, we mentioned the, the Feldspar one. That's there's both an inter international market, there's a domestic market there. Um, literally we're just chasing the final pricing. Okay. Um, the way we're looking at it, um, margins are quite significant on that okay. that alone. So we'll be putting out the numbers on that to give a better idea to the market as to the sort of revenue streams that we've got there. There was a historic Feldspar resource on, Ble on Blesberg, and I think we'll draw reference to that in some of our social media posts and in the RNS that accompanies that. Okay, and can you confirm what happened to the high value Coltan? Was it assayed? Results, did it get sold? It's still with um, Fujax on that. Okay. So we're going through, there were some other minerals that were identified as part of that testing. Hence why Jacques has asked for some additional samples for, um, for the CPR to be finalized. Yep. Uh, some of the other minerals with that are significant in terms of revenue okay. um, and current pricings and demand. So that changed the picture quite dramatically on that. So we're just waiting for more okay. follow-up um, assays to give us greater you know, to make sure that that sample that went to them was was representative of what we have at Blesberg. Okay. And the last so question. Okay. Okay. The last question on Blesberg was: It's about the jork and the CPR. We have covered that, so you, you, that's being worked on. And when was the timeline for that? We're waiting for the additional assays, like I say, from from Jack. So it will like there will be an abridged version, which will be going into the Nairobi Securities Exchange listing document. Um, but the final version will be going out early in the new year okay. with the new resources, which will cover these um, higher value uh, minerals that have been identified there. Okay. And on NSE then, yes, that listing document, okay, again, timeline on the NSE listing? Uh, 
Look, um, Martin was just getting the updated uh, legal opinion on Blesberg today. Yep. So that's been updated because we've obviously submitted all the mining right application work so the, the li- and we received the mining permit a couple of months ago, as you recall, in one of the RNSs. So our legal status there has changed quite significantly with all the reports on NCLT, on Corridor, on Mancina Cobalt are all in. The reports here are all in. The key thing which was outstanding was the financials, both interims and annuals. Those have been submitted. So this week is a key week to wrap up as much of that outstanding work with them as we can. Okay, good. And just so, will it be happening before the year end? Yes, it will. Will it happen in October? No. Will it happen in November? I would give a 75 to 90% likelihood that it will happen in November. Right. Okay. Good stuff. And just finishing off on the funding, then, there's just a couple of questions on the funding here. So the shares that were added recently, um, they weren't the placing, it was a subscription, but I think it was it was uh, originally agreed 18 months ago, was it, at 3.75, and, and now a premium has been paid by AUO at 5p. Um, I wonder if you could just make a comment on that. Yeah, look, we... We, when we got started back in early 2023, we decided to lock down all our kind of future funding arrangements, remove that risk as we went forward. And and you've seen this, Mark. So we did that transaction with QGC and it was a series of tranches which were made available to us on certain milestones, some without any milestones. And that was originally agreed at 3.75 pence um, for 3.75 million and 100 million shares to be issued. We then amended that um, earlier this year when we did the takeover panel waiver, which allowed them to go up to, up to I think, 50.1%. And there was a tranche of funding put in there at 10 pence. Okay. Um, what we've done this time around is, again, under the tranches available there, we have, and each tranche back then was three quarters of a million pounds, which is what we've just done. Um, this time we've done it at five pence, and that's just because things have moved. Okay. And, you know, uh, it's credit to people out there. We've been able to, to raise the bar by, what, 30%. Okay, yeah. So it's not – I don't call it a placing in the traditional sense because we already had this – this was cash available. If you look at the interims announcement we put out well, – I know I'm supposed to be quick with all these answers. When we put out the interims, we announced that under that facilities, which were a maximum of 8.53 million pounds, we had 6 million available and undrawn. So going forward, our funding categorically is not a risk for us as we move ahead. And that is without the bigger uh, impact that that AUO fund will give us in terms of major capital development. Yeah, okay. Now it's good you can be flexible with that with AUO as well, like you say, you know, taking being realistic with how the share price has indeed performed. I know, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and it's another one here. Many shareholders have a clear understanding of the shares to be issued from various subscriptions and stage payments. Are we looking long-term around 450 million? Um, Not on my calculations. I know there's a number of deferred share-based considerations due to various vendors of of various projects. I think as and when those payments become due on certain milestones being paid, I think on the basis that we're actually generating positive cash flow, we'll be looking at kind of tightening up our capital structure and issuing cash, paying with cash rather than stock. And we do have that. Given we know these counterparties uh, and we work and there's still our partners in all these projects, we would be in a position to pay cash. We would rather miss you shares. So 450, that's the way out there, the worst case, if you want to call it that. Um, we're at, what, 202 million at the moment. I would suggest it's, it's in between. It's, it's probably halfway in between the two. Okay. Excellent. Well, that covers everything. Thank you very much, Jason Brewer, for going through those questions. Shareholders, I'm sure, will be appreciative. Thank you for your time. Jason Brewer, the CEO of Marula Mining. Mark, thanks as always. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.